and welcome again to our channel here on YouTube. We call ourselves the Culture Podcast. And I'm here with a beautiful Jacqueline Johnson. You can call me JQ. Okay, so she's actually the first time on our show. And we're here to talk about a very juicy topic. And I'm hoping she's going to help me dilute, not just dilute, but inject every form of, should I say, <laughs> ingredients or whatever. I just want to understand this. You know, mm-hmm. you know, we all have this kind of way of dealing with family when it comes to family and friends. Okay. So today our topic, we are talking about family and friends. Okay. Who has come true for you? Is it your family side or your friend side? For me, I think my family has always been my side. Mm. If I'm to pick that, but I think my family has always been my side. I'm somebody who doesn't really do friends, you know. Mm. But since you are here, I want mm. to get your own point of view. So who has come true for you? Is it your family or your friends? Ah, personally, I would say my friends have come true for me more. But family is family. But I've had some very solid friends that have become family. And I think where everybody comes from sort of, you know, plays a role. If you come from a family that is, you know, very family oriented tradition oriented very nuclear connected everybody's checking up on each other then you always have people to rely on but then if you don't come from such a family and you find yourself looking for confidence um, solace advice in other people who you consider your friends then those people sort of become your your people your family so basically your background plays a big role Advisor into role. who you you think will come to for you okay. the most but you know when it comes to friends actually mm. i'm taking from your own point of perspective mm. when it comes to friends don't you think sometimes friends can stab you from the back friends do stab you know people from the back and even as a friend you might also unintentionally stab your other friend in the back is, is that something go unintentionally yes, there is there is there is, I don't tell you why there is, there is situations like that. So say a friend has spoken to you about something and needed your counsel on something and you felt you didn't have the capacity to give that advice. Okay. So you seek another friend who is probably not even related to your friend or maybe someone who is, might be related to the person with the perspective of, see, this is what this is, hap- this is what is happening. This is what this person needs counsel on. If you are in the person's shoe or if you are in my shoe, what would you do? So indirectly, you tell somebody the issue somebody had come to tell you about. Your intention was not to go and spread it. Your intention was genuine. Get people's advice and come and advise this friend. But indirectly, you ended up spelling what the person had entrusted you with. Okay. So if you are my friend and you hear it, you'll be disappointed. You think, say, oh, I'm selling you out. But then that was not my agenda. My agenda was to genuinely get an objective perspective and come and counsel you. So indirectly, friends can start friends. Um, but then my, my, my main point is that knowing your friends and knowing what role each of your friends play in your life is the key. You know, b- before we even come to the role that friends play, okay? Mm. Now let's let's focus on family, okay? Mm. I was talking about backstabbing. Mm-hmm. I feel like family also do that a lot, especially in terms of maybe when it comes to progress, okay? We have family that paints enemies, okay? Have you ever had that kind of encounter? For you, like you started off, your friends have been more mm. of a family to you than mm. your own family, mm-hmm. but again you are coming from a family so have you had that kind of experience definitely i come from a very extended family my okay. grandfather had 13 children with eight different wow women. shout out to you grandpa <laughs> <laughs> my dad had five kids with five different women i have uncles with three children three different so it's a very broad family See. and in a family where everybody has a smaller family like in my grandfather's family Two children have one mother. Two children have one mother. So it's it's. It, I grew up seeing a lot of you know, bickering, yeah, fighting. Yeah, I remember, I remember vividly as a child, one of my step grandmothers was fighting with my my grandmother, and one bit one finger, the other bit one nipple. Sorry to say the <laughs> explicit word, and they ended up in the hospital. And, and you know the funny thing about this is <laughs> the moment this happens. Automatically, the children also get it. Exactly. Don't talk to him. Don't exactly. talk to him. Exactly. That thing. It's so fun. It, it was so <laughs> uncomfortable. And we're living in like a very big compound house okay. that my grandfather had built. So everybody had this. And so you see, do not come and touch my thing. Do not come and do. So again, that's why I say, if you come from a family 
that is void of all of this drama. You're excited to go to your family yeah. and, and, and seek counsel. You're excited to say, this is my family and I'm choosing my family over friends. But if from the get-go you've been, you've been brought up with the idea that everybody is to themselves, don't cross this person, don't cross that yeah. person. Even when you are struggling, you can't go to the other person for advice because you feel like this party is not nice to this party and that party is not nice to that party. Yeah. So then you end up finding solace in other people who do not have any agenda or, or stuff and it, it's what, what's worse is with cases like that it transcends down to even the the next generation yes, of children true, that come true, that is so true because I, I have an i have an uncle now that for some reason if i greet him he wouldn't respond to just me. look at this why because he feels i i have become like god has blessed me i'm okay and i'm all only thinking about my own father and my people and i'm like you also have your responsibilities. Yeah. You wouldn't expect that out of all of those children that my grandfather has, if I can support one, I should support everybody. It wouldn't be realistic. So even till years later, it, it, it trickles down. And I can imagine me having a child and that uncle still having a grudge with that yeah, child. Because so somebody who has more exactly. exactly. Because I have, I have, yeah, there's a situation, yeah. um, a, a problem out of the situation. Yeah, I, I think yeah. mine also has a different narrative altogether. Mm -hmm. I'm also coming from a very small family mm -hmm. and we are not too equipped. What I mean by we are not too equipped, I'm talking about we are not from that kind of rich home. Mm -hmm. Okay, so... Another day, we grew up loving each other. Mm. My mom and my dad made us understood, okay, that we only have each other. Mm. Okay, we can only go out to make friends. Mm. But when you get back, the only one you are left home with is your family. family. Mm. You understand? So we grew up learning to love each other. So it has always based on the family. Mm. So if even if I need to talk to someone, if I'm not talking to my sister, mm. I'm talking to a cousin. Mm. I'm not talking to a cousin. I'm talking to my auntie. Mm. It was in that narrative, okay? So, when it comes to friends, I hardly make friends. Not that I have friends, but I hardly make friends. And I think I also had an encounter with friendship, mm. which also made me step back a little bit. If it's not little, <laughs> you why? I tell you, you understand? <laughs> so, I think from there, it has always been a family. Even right now, if I need a problem to be solved right now, if I need something, the only person I'm going to call on my phone is going to be my sister. You see? So it is always that interactive. So I like the idea that you, your aspect of it has been friends. Then my aspect is, is of family. Yeah. So the interaction or the, the, the communication is going to be very, very interesting. True, All right. True. So now tell me, okay, I wanted to ask this. In terms of the backstabbing I was talking about, mm -hmm. family doing that, friends doing that, in any case, or has there been any scenario a personal experience where someone stabbed you at the back. Hmm. That, that, there's there's been a couple of times. Okay. Uh, let me let me let me talk about the the one that hurts me the most. But then, funny enough, we are back to being the best of friends. And it happens. It, it happens. happens. Yeah. Uh, sometimes you need to go through the bad studies to appreciate yes. people <laughs> more. So, um, I I had a friend. Very close friend. Funny enough, we even share the same first name. <laughs> so we uh, were this close, and then she had gone to say something to somebody, and I wasn't so pleased with it. But that was not even my case because, you know, like I said, for me, perspective is everything. Yeah, it's true. The perspective she might have said it is different from the perspective that person might have told me. So I didn't take that to heart. I was like, oh, it's just one of those things the person is saying. It's not a big deal. Then in December, there was a time in December, all the 30 December festivities. The time we were partying, we were partying and doing and our own We ended up meeting at um, a particular hangout spot. And so we're all just, you know, hanging out. And then when it was time to go home, I was a bit exhausted. I looked a bit sleepy. I was really not like in the mood to okay. be able to carry myself yeah. home. So then the friends around her said, oh, you, why don't you take Jackie home? No, I didn't come here with her. She didn't talk. She, wow. I, I, I didn't know she was going to be. Am I the one who brought her here? Please. And so the person thought I had slept, but then I was just, you know, sort of dozing off. So I could hear everything the person would say. And in my head, I'm wondering. So then the, the other friends put me in a car, 
and then I go home by myself. Okay. So then I was wondering, what if the, the person they put me in the car with was an arm robber? Uh -huh. What if the car had had an accident? Like as my friend, why are you not thinking about the danger that I will yeah. be in? So it really hurt me so much. What the person had said didn't hurt me, but that singular act of not yeah. caring for my safety hurt me so much. I didn't talk to the person for a whole year. Wow. And then I, I think we are going to we are going to <laughs> talk on that. We we'll chance upon that marriage. Okay? Yeah. Sometimes I feel like not talking to each other it is of a lady's thing more. Am I lying? I I would get I would, I would guess so. I feel like guys you guys trash out issues very of fast. Course, like of course, of course. yo, this thing you do, I don't feel I'm yo bro, I don't mean I'm Maybe sorry. Then forget you, you forget I'm the mood. But women with our emotion, I think it's just how we we were created. Our fiber was created to do it. it because I asked that because you said you didn't talk to her. Yeah. So yeah. it means that decision yes, was, was, coming from yes it, was, yeah. it was coming from okay. me it was very very okay. deliberate okay. it was coming from me and i remember within the period my birthday had come and then i had received the package and it was from her and then the message was happy birthday i miss our friendship and it, it 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 i mean it was like oh that's nice that you remembered and not even just remember i wanted to do it or something but my point is if you really want to do more yeah. when i'm not reaching out about this reach out to me hey jackie i've noted this and this is there something in particular I did? But is the, it, it, it came off as, oh, I'm okay. You are, you are not talking to me. I'm okay. I don't talk to you. So then eventually, after a year, I decided I would speak to them. So for me, that's my vibe. If you do me something and it hurts me, it takes me a year to deal with it. And a then, year? Wow. <laughs> it takes me a year to deal with it and get to my right, address it and come back. So it means right now, when I do something to you, it will take a year to come back on my podcast again. <laughs> 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 I don't do anything that will okay. make me feel not coming. All right, all right, all right, all right. Yeah, so basically, then, that's, that's your experience. Yeah, that's my experience. But you, you guys are back on Oh, you're trying to do that. We are we are back to even being better friends than we were before. We Excellent. That's 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 perfect. Okay. So again, if if I'm allowed to ask, mm -hmm. when you decided not to talk to her, mm -hmm. was there a way that she got the idea that you were not talking to her? Did she reach out to you in that particular range? Like, okay, I've decided today that I'm not talking to Ima again in my life. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't think Ima is aware that I have decided or I have made that decision, mm -hmm. okay? And then maybe Ima reach out to me, let's say, tomorrow. Charlie, what's up? How do I let Ima understand? Or how do you manage to let your friend get to know that you were not talking to her? That's something women are very good at. Okay. Communicating without words. <laughs> <laughs> I you see. you will get that memo, honey. I don't have to say <laughs> much. Um, yeah, so stop viewing her status. Um, stop reacting to her social media posts. Um, I don't think I blocked her, but we're just not interacting. Together. And she didn't even bother to come. Exactly to my point. Exactly my point. So then, when the when the birthday present came, I felt oh that's an effort. But then the real thing you should have done was reach out as soon as she saw that there was a break. And then, but then also, I think she just also knew that. Yes, I feel like I was just about to say yeah, that. Maybe she, yeah, she, she's also she, aware yeah, that she, she was feeling good. well. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, so she was. She took she that was, from that. She was feeling good. So I remember when we, when I finally, I was like, hey, um, I've finally gotten over what you have done, and I want to talk about it. I wasn't happy you did so so and so so, and then she admitted. She was like, yes, I admit that I've made some bad decisions as friends. I'm not so proud of it. I'm happy. You've taken time to get over it, and and if you are okay, thank you so much. Maybe we, we don't have to be the best of friends, but we can still be, you know, casual. So it wasn't forced. It was very cool. Okay. We went back to watching her status, then occasionally, hey, do you want to visit? Do you want me to visit? Meet up, and now we are like best back, of friends. Back to be best of friends. Okay. Yeah. So again, let's talk. Let's go a little bit deeper. Okay. So we are having. I was having this conversation with someone online. Mm pertaining this particular topic, okay? Mm -hmm. And she told me something that really caught my attention, mm -hmm. okay? And I felt like maybe I can ask you. Sure, sure. So, according to her, when I asked her about what we are discussing, mm -hmm. according to her, she is going to say a friend has come through for her more than family. So, I decided to ask her, okay, in what sense or in what scenario, okay? Because someone can come through for you and you might see the person as a friend, mm -hmm. In uh, sorry, as a family more mm -hmm. than your own family, but it could also mean the person came through for you negatively. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because 
We have people that can mm. come through for you, but it will be in a negative way. Mm. For instance, let's say, as a young man, I'm struggling, or a young guy, I'm struggling, okay? And I need to do something to pick up myself up, okay? Yeah. So I meet this friend, and this friend tells me that, you know something, I'm into this particular ritualist, or I'm doing mm. this, mm -hmm. okay? Now, at that particular moment, that's what he sells to me. I'm interested, I go for it, okay? Does it mean he has come true for me as a, as, as a friend? Because here lies the case, I have uncles and aunties that some of them might even be at the state, okay? Mm -hmm. But you call them today, the Italian uncle, what's all? Mm -hmm. I still dig out now, what you mm -hmm. do about it? And then they don't even want to respond to it. All right. But here lies the case, someone who is just a friend was able to direct me to this particular uh, how do they call them in tree? Odin for in I please don't laugh at me. My tree is very bad. But like this ritual is okay. And maybe I was able to pick myself up from there. This is a negative impact on me. Yeah. But whichever way that friend came through for me. Mm -hmm. What is your take on that? Because what the girl told me is actually similar to that. Mm -hmm. The friend came to her, or she she went for the friend's room, but they came and the friend came through for her. In a way that was negatively impacting on her life. Mm. She started smoking, she started going mm. to the club, doing all sorts of things. Mm. She was selling herself for some a little bit of points, mm. which she was okay with that because mm. she felt she had aunties and uncles who, who were not helping. Exactly. She calls them today, and then today there's a different excuse. Tomorrow there is this, this. And I know there's a whole lot of people who are going through similar things. Okay, so the nearest things they, they, they find themselves doing is what to actually give them or put them on their feet. And sometimes these are friends, influence, and all that. What's your take on that? I think it goes back to the point I said about knowing your friends. Okay. I had a friend like that. I had a friend like that. And hers, she was not influencing me because I didn't go to her because I needed anything. Okay. It was just a period where I needed companionship. And I didn't have that in my my cousins, my uncles, or anything. And then she was the closest. And then that was her life. She was not buying me into that life, but that was her life. And because I was friends with her, people automatically assumed that awesome. I was. I mean, there was nothing I could have said to defend myself until I broke that friendship with her before that tag went away. So here is the case. The person came through for me just because of companionship, yeah. just because I needed somebody to talk to to. To move about with but then they didn't do you know give me anything yeah, of their benefits yeah, in return yeah, yeah. but then that negative mark on them became associated yeah, yeah, yeah. with me until i set them away so yes their friends they are friends that will come through and do that but then if you know your friends like this person because i knew who she was and knew where she moved and how she moved i was very very deliberate in not moving where she moved and not doing what she did. So the key point is know your know friends. Know your friends. If, if you know your friends and the, the, the place they hold, you know how to tap into them. I have a friend that is strictly for my career because mm. I know the, 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 the ranks with the person has going to reach their career. We are not in the same field, but then they've, they've worked in corporate for a longer time. They know how to handle situations in the office. And I struggle with that. So okay. I go to this friend, it's strictly Charlie. That's my manager, they do this. So what you guys say they can do, you get. So I get that solace in, in that person. Then I have friends that like come through financially, emotionally, like they are they are solid. I'll tell you one of my very close friends, what they did okay. when I graduated. So in school, we asked to create a lot of simulated companies, you know, companies that you create to 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 do uh, campaigns yeah. and things and get awarded marks. So I led, I created a PR uh, company. It was simulated, not registered, just PR company to do a lot of academic work. Yeah. We did very great. My group came up on top, reflected in my results. I graduated. I was very happy. And then on my a week after my graduation or a month after my graduation, one of them, they, they, they invite me over. They're like, oh, come and let's celebrate your graduation. I go, we cook and everything. And then they said, oh, we have your graduation gift. And I was like, I was graduating the gift again. Because on my graduation, these people brought food and drinks. They were serving all my guests. So I thought that was the end. Then they give me um, the documents from the registrar general. You know when you register, wow. when you register a company? Yeah. They had registered the company as a legal entity. Wow. That if I get an office today, I can say that this is my business. The business. Name. With this <laughs> I 
at least start friends. <laughs> <laughs> the business was registered. My first client was also another friend in that friend cycle who has a Thai business and now I manage their digital uh, marketing and their brand management thingy and I'm not like free paid monthly retainers and stuff. So you see, you 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 need to know your friends. If you know your friends, you know how to tap into them. So for me, in these two instances, it's even the least of the the things I can say that yeah. friends have come through for me more than family. Because yeah. what my friends do for me, my family cannot do one quarter of it. Yeah. <laughs> I understand. You know, we have we have people like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, when I was having interaction with people, I came. To a whole lot of comments where people were telling me that yeah. when it comes to friends, friends has come true for them so many times than family. But okay. family is family. Family is family. That's the thing. Family is family. The blood is the blood. The blood. Ukwa, you come you back. You come back. That's the thing. That's no matter what you do. Yeah. But you see, I also understand when it comes to those kind of things because um, there was a point someone told me that, you know, if you are going to rely on this particular kind of conversation, there are points that family can do less. Mm. You understand for instance like the family i'm coming from right now they could do less yeah. so if you say you are going to rely on them it means you can't also do True. anything yeah so that is where you get friends from other external sources yeah. who come in to help you yeah. to be able to get to where you want yeah. to get so when you wear these two of course you are going to go for the external sources because yeah. maybe they are they're the ones that have been able to put you here your family was not able to put you here. Yeah. Your family might have supported you. Yeah. Okay, so my kid is doing this. So let us support him in prayer. Yeah. Let us hope that he can achieve this mm -hmm. and all that. Mm -hmm. You see, but when it comes maybe the finances and then the links or what we call connections, mm -hmm. your friends are always going to be there to do that for you. Yeah, but I think a point that a lot of people tend to forget when they go through situations where family don't come pay for them and friends do is that when they themselves get to a place that they are established, mm -hmm. they forget to also be the help for the other family. Please members. repeat that again. <laughs> Please repeat when, that when, again. When family that think that family didn't come through or support them get to the point where they can support family, they tend to forget that they have to. They don't but, go back. But, but, but they must. And for me, it's, it's, it's one of the things that I am very particular about, and when I'm particular about it, it's not it's not in in, in particular for like the older family members, because for the older family members, I judge them a lot. I would like, have a exactly, and I judge them a lot. I'm like, if you guys had done your things right, we wouldn't be in situations like this. On Twitter, I I, I turned upon some particular image, and then the caption was, there, there was somebody in the club who looked like he was dancing. Mm -hmm. The caption was. The time that people were, were buying or taking East Lebanon lines, mm -hmm. the uncle or the grandfather was in the club dancing mm -hmm. with the ladies. <laughs> yeah. And I really stopped laughing. Yeah, you understand? It is. And it is true. According to the, the caption, the, the real understanding of it is that if the uncle or the, the grandfather was also doing what others were doing at East Lebanon, and by this, I also want to say that there's like. <laughs> <laughs> you understand? Yeah, so, true. what you're saying is true. It's yeah, true. yeah. It's so, true. so, for me, I tend to be the support for the younger family members, like those that are GSS coming to go into SS, those that are coming to write BC, those just got into SHS. Like my, my colleague, they always say, yeah, you're always going to one school or the other because I've become the, oh, this person is going to SS, Auntie Jackie will take you to Accra, go and buy the things, drive you to the school and all of that because I didn't get that when I was there. I, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't get that when I was there. So I make sure that if I can be a support, I am there for those that yeah. are younger and need it. So and and with this driving, you see, they also grew up knowing that exactly. a family member came, came through for me more than a friend. More than a friend. So that it changes it that changes, It changes, it changes that you, cycle it's, a it's whole lot. A whole lot of I feel like we should, we, should, we should do more of that. I like the point where you raise that, you know, when you are established well, you mm -hmm. see, you should always go back to your roots. Yeah. Go back to where you are coming from, yeah. okay? There are people out there that need help. Yeah. So, yes, a friend has come through for you. We thank that friend, thank that particular partner and all that, okay? But then look backwards or take a step back, mm -hmm. okay? There might be that um, uncle's son who, who happens to be maybe your cousin or something that also needs help to be able to get somewhere. Mm -hmm. Go and do that. Forget about the fact that your uncle... Mm -hmm. But you see, sometimes too, I don't blame them because 
I've had people tell me that. Pastor, I mean, most of you are very mono. We are listening to the put you down right now. Mm. I've had people say that. Mm. You understand? So people also go out there, and when they are well established, it becomes very difficult for them to want to go back to help. But then you see, for me, I really do believe it's a mentality thing. Okay. Again, how you are brought up and where you are brought up influences a lot of your thinking. Yeah. If like the family you are coming from, your close knitted family, yeah. your nuclear family, you know you have always relied on your sister. Yeah. Do you think that when you become established, you think that your sister will put you down? Not at all. You wouldn't. It, all. It's because of where they come from and what they've seen, okay. or sometimes not what they seen, what they have heard, mm. that make them act a certain way. If if you believe in whatever supreme being you believe in, yeah. and you believe in the, the teachings of that supreme being that says, love your neighbor as yourself, how much more you're black? So whatever pre-assumptions, they will put me down. Those that have, even the spite cry, or mm-hmm. let me use him as a reference, yeah. or even at uh, Dangote, or the richest people in the world, do not think that their families are going to put them down. They don't, they don't think like that. It's, 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 I Sometimes I say it's an excuse, really, for people to not want to go back and help. Okay. And if you don't if you do not do that, you see, when, when even when you don't do that, God forbid if you go, it is the same family people that you were thinking were putting it's you true. down. Who will come and come and put you down okay. in the ground? Your friends will only come and sympathize. It's for the final right. Yes. <laughs> your family will be the ones to do it. So yeah. you might leave them, go boy your bra, so why do you think people people travel to the to the US when then when they are becoming sick or ill, they rush back to home so that they have family around them to to support them and take care of them? Because they might have gone there with friends, support and all of that. But those friends will they'll become engaged when you also need them. Yeah. So then when you are in your sickest or sick, those people you ignored when you were there, you end up coming back to them. And that is when they when they have wicked mind, they'll say, Ah, you didn't mind us when you were there. We won't mind you. But eventually, if you die, they are the same people that will bury you. So it's a mentality thing. It's it's really, 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 really a mentality thing. Okay. And I would appreciate it if people do assess it and look at it from so many angles. Is it really worth it? Is it really the case? Are they really doing something to me? Or it is my own inability to, you know, want to go back and help? And then when we are honest with ourselves, we we'll realize that really it's just excuses we are making for not wanting to go back so, to okay. the support. For so for you, you 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 believe that it is based on the excuses that people give. It is. But but what 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 of those that actually have experienced exactly, have seen that they've seen those particular things happen? You understand? And you know. There was a time that someone also told me that, oh, he went to see a pastor where the pastor prayed for him, okay? Mm-hmm. And the revelation or whatever that came out <laughs> was the fact that, okay, there was someone, I'm not going to mention them, but there was someone in the family that was actually doing that to him, okay? So until he breaks that particular chain, He's still going to remain where he is, okay? So he ended up asking the, the pastor, okay, so how do I break this chain, you know? Mm-hmm. Bear in mind, he told me that this the, the person they mentioned the name to, he's not talking to the person. Okay. So, and like the, like you rightfully said, it's a generational something. Like the way you explain your family, okay? Mm-hmm. We all, he also grew up with, where there was a little bit of fight from the parents' side. A climbing her to them, so he won't be talking to them. Mm-hmm. You understand? So imagine you've got into a, a pastor and the pastor also telling you that the person you are not talking to more, or no one or your oh, own. <laughs> <the confirmation. laughs> you confirmation. I you. And so he said, Oh, they have to go to the sea to wash down that yeah. kind of thing. And then when they finish, okay, something Broke. begin yes, something begins to change in his life. You understand? So to him, he believes that indeed mm-hmm. the person was doing something. And according to him, when the thing changed, it was not even long that then that particular person also passed on. You mm. understand? So he believes. You understand? So, so someone so, like this. So what if that person also goes to the afterward and says, this family member was the one who went to kill me? Sometimes it's, it's <laughs> so powerful. <laughs> when we decided to bring this topic on board, you see, I had this kind of long argument with my producer, okay? Mm. I was telling him that, you see, when we are going to talk about this, it's going to be a very long conversation because others had that kind of bad experience when it comes to family. You can judge them because they've had experiences where maybe you and I would not have that experience. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. Okay. One okay. of those experiences that will blow your mind. So my mom, my mom was late. She came to 
Accra when she was about, I think, 18, 19. And she never went back home. Okay. But as long as I knew my mom, we never visited her hometown. She never talked about hometown. Almost as if where she came from didn't exist. You see. And at the, at the young age, you know, you don't think of those yeah. things. So yeah. you didn't ask of those things. So I remember one time she got news wow. that her mom had passed. And she didn't go to the funeral. Wow. I I remember the conversation she was having with my dad and it was along the lines of Charlie, where I'm coming from. If you, if you do this, they'll give you this hey. and all of those. So, oh, but uh-huh. is here. <laughs> so, so she 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 wants to avoid that. And a few years down the line, she and my my dad were planning to get uh, traditionally engaged. So she okay. had to go back home. So an uncle of hers or a brother of hers had died and the family had sent a message that if you come for if you don't come for this program, then consider as not your family. You don't know. And also in the previous she was preparing to do the engagement with my dad. So she was like, Okay, let me use this funeral, go apologize, also announce yeah. this so that we're there. My mom left Accra sun, Sunday afternoon. Got to a village Sunday evening. Sunday evening, we spoke when she arrived. She had said, um, because she knows where she's going, she already ate some cocoa. She's not going to eat <laughs> okay. home. By the way, she went home. They were like, oh, it's been so many years, so we made fufu for you. That's nice. Come and eat. My mom ate the fufu. Monday afternoon, she was rushed to the hospital. Wow. Tuesday, she called that I should bring her money. Wednesday, I was supposed to go on Friday. Wednesday, the call until she's passed. She dogs me. Anyways, because I realized the situation was just just realized that's how I lost my mom. Wow. So I was one of those people that you know, whenever people say spirituality and all of those things do it, I tell them you have not lived it. You have not experienced it. I have experienced it. I have lived it. I know it. I have seen. I have seen it manifest in real life. Wow. <laughs> so it does exist. I, I, I think since then, since my mom died, I don't think I, if I see an aunt of my mom anywhere, I recognize her. We've lost contact completely. Wow. And that was not from my end. My dad was the one who tried to make the deliberate attempt to cut off, you know, contact completely. Of so course, yeah. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't know or see them anywhere. But that is not to say that if I see one somewhere and they remember me and say, oh, you are so, 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 so and so's child. How are you? I am in need of so so and so. I will automatically think that because what they did to my mom is there. If I give them money to support, they will do that to me. I, I don't think like that. I know okay. spirituality stuff exists, but I don't think like that. And that is just me. Okay, okay. And that is just me. So yes, people have these limited experiences. It's what you make of those experiences. Others, it influences how they operate for the rest of their yeah. life in fear, anxiety, and all of that. For me, I don't let those things confine me. Do I believe they exist? Yes, they exist. Family can do that to you. They can stab you to the extent of literally stabbing you to your death. Yeah. But do, do, do that mean I would not acknowledge family or help family when there is the need? No, that is for me. I would if I could. So I think, again, it all boils down to the point. Your beliefs, how you are brought up, how the, the experiences you have in life and how they've shaped your thinking. Somebody might be watching and think, oh, you, you really don't understand your childhood things. Are you? you are just saying it for sake, for saying sake, excuse me. But then that is really my belief. So I, I do hope and who, whoever has that sort of lived experience would, would, you know, get themselves out of those chains of this is what my family is. If I don't do it this way, you, I feel like you just bind yourself for a very long time. And yeah, if you believe in your God, whichever God you serve, Charlie, I have that faith. That Charlie, your mindset will be changed. Too, That's right? true. You know. So, oh, don't be so sorry, my mama. Sorry. Energy, 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 but that is, is sort of work related. So mm-hmm. I was coming to ask you a question mm-hmm. based on that. Okay. Mm-hmm. So you can also have those things coming from your workplace. Mm-hmm. You understand? Mm-hmm. Because there's always this kind of competition mm-hmm. over there. Mm-hmm. So here lies the case. Maybe your family has come through for you. Mm-hmm. But then you find yourself working at a place where I don't know the day 
you have this kind of competition and hate and all this. Okay, there was a time ago I heard this story on TikTok, mm-hmm. and there's there's this popular TikTok guy that mm-hmm. the story started trending. I've forgotten his name, but I'm sure that people will know what I'm talking about. Okay, that he's passed on, and some of the rumors and some of the things that came out was the fact that this guy was poisoned by a friend mm-hmm. who actually is jealous of him. Mm-hmm. Now the word is jealous. We don't know how truthful it is whether the person is jealous or not, mm-hmm. but according to them. He was poisoned, mm. and the autopsy results that came out also indicated that he was poisoned. Mm. Okay, so in this case, you understand, you realize that the both sides are not really that safe, mm-hmm. you know, because a friend can come through for you, and then the next moment, a friend is killing you, yeah, and a family can also come through for you, and the next moment, a family is also killing you, okay. Yeah. So, in this particular way, say, as, as a human, you know, as, as a personal, how do you position yourself in this, in this area? Does that mean you are going to go a freelance person with any bushel, any friends? No. Or what? Nobody, I don't think anybody can live on this earth without some sort of human relationship or human association. Okay. But, I, but I feel like there are people living like that. Though. No, they, 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 they ask a singular person. They do not relate to strangers. They do not relate to family. Okay, do not, okay, okay, okay. Nobody okay. can. No matter, even, even if you are yeah, yes, 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 yes. Like, yes. Even the homeless people have yes, homeless yes, people they relate yes, with. Yes. That the community, community <laughs> is what makes humanity sane, yeah. honestly. Community. Yeah. So it can be your community of friends, your community of workers, your community of family. But really, there's no single person on earth that can survive without community. Yeah. You almost go mad. Even the madman who knows that the watches a lie is his friend. Even the mad people, they even have friends. Exactly. They go to the watches a lie. They relate to their day. own mad people. Exactly. Then they see each other on the road. Yes. <laughs> 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 they know that if they need breakfast, they can go to at yeah. yeah, this particular place and get breakfast. So, but my point is, you 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 can't you can't almost have it all figured out. I think that's what we try to do yeah. as humans. We try to we, we try to manage everything, try to understand everything, and then we become so consumed in in this calculations and manifestations that we forget to actually enjoy the life, the moments that we have now. Yeah. If I am in a workplace or if I'm in an office and my spirit and this desper- and that happens a lot, especially for me. Okay. I, 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 I am a very happily go-to person. So when I see somebody who energy is, is so down, almost finds me annoying, then I begin to clash with the person because it's like the person is on a low vibration, yeah. I'm on a high vibration. And then the person do not want to meet me. And then there's always that conflict. When the person is happy, I don't have to be happy. When the person is quiet, I need to be quiet. So I experienced that a lot. But then what I have come to know and learn over the time is when it is my time to enjoy my time, I enjoy my time. I don't look at the mood that this person is for it to dictate how I enjoy my time. When that person is in, 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 in his or her time, I also respect it and give that person the space. Like, I mean, you can coexist without making a yeah. big fuss out of things. So basically, my point is, know your environment, know your people, and know how to navigate through them, and you enjoy things. If you, you try to be about calculating, channel you know, where calculations are, so no, I broke. Be wrong. Yeah. <laughs> you be wrong. <laughs> so, no, I'm calculating. My, 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 my pastor once said, okay, in order for a human being to progress or for you to grow, you always you are always going to need two rooms to stand on. And that's family and friends. Yeah. Whether you like it or not. Yeah. Yeah. These two people are going to play a very vital role in your yeah. life. Yeah. Okay. Without these two people, like you said, you can't exist. Yeah. And even so strangers. Yes. And strangers are the people that become your friends. Yes. Later, and I, so. you know, and I've had people yeah. also say that thing a lot. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. uh, how does it like a stranger has come through for me more than even my family? You understand? But then that stranger, no, that that is a. I always say that that's a misquote because once you begin to associate that person to coming through for you, then that person no more becomes a stranger. That person becomes a it family. It becomes either family or friend. Okay. How? Okay. No matter where you want to place them, mm. you know that people. You see, that the level to where people place people. You can be my friend. We are not related by blood, yes. but based on our relationship and the things you have done for me, I can say that Charlie, this person. If they put my brother there and they put this friend there, I will pick that I, should, I, will, I will sacrifice everything I have to go to that friend and leave my brother. Yeah. 
Yeah. And and that is what it is. And strangers, and you you say a person is a stranger if you've not had any contact with the person, yeah. and the person has not done anything for you. But once the person does something for you, you acknowledge yeah. it. You are you begin communicating and thanking the person or yeah. being in constant communication. Otherwise, you can't look at that is no more a stranger. Yes, so a stranger that. cannot be come through for you more than a friend. Yeah. The stranger comes through when they come through for you, then they automatically become your friend. Okay. I think so. Excellent. That, that Excellent. is there. So, so there you have it. Okay. And <laughs> There, there have been so many education, like the, the education here, <laughs> and those so wrong. I've learned something here, okay. But um, just just to put out there on your final notes or yeah. on your final, just to just let us understand because I know our viewers are yeah. going to also join this conversation, mm-hmm. okay. And you should tell us when it comes to your family or your friend who has come to for you. Just yes, let's let's have that interaction too online, okay. Mm-hmm. So I just want you to let them understand or just give us a word of way. How do you relate? To your friends and your family, where at the end of the day you are going to be in that kind of neutral way of flow. Yeah. Okay. Just, just something for them yeah. to know. Um, I think what I'll say in conclusion is, family is family. Yeah. And friends can become family. Family is always family, but friends can become family. And for family to stay family, you have to also act as a family. You need exactly. to you need to be human, act like a family. Exactly. And for a friend to stay as a friend, you also need to be a friend to that friend. Do not be the friend that is always getting so that you can say that my friends are coming through for me. My friends are coming through for me because every time you are going to send you momo, they are going out. <laughs> they are going the out. Is important. They are going out. You are not paying some. Yeah. And you are you just keep taking, taking, taking from your friends and you think it gives you the right to say my friends have come through for me and you are both full of it but then if you have the understanding that your friend is coming through for you in 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 a need that you have identify the need that your friend also has that if you do it that friend will also stands somewhere and boasts that i have a friend, a friend that yes, is also yes, coming yes, through yes, for me true. it doesn't have to be the same thing that this person give me money you to give money take me out take you out that doesn't show that you are, you are a friend yeah. but really knowing the needs of your friends or your family and being practic- um, practical and and strategic and intentional about meeting those needs yeah. is what makes people also see you as family or friends so yes receive enjoy be confident in saying my family is above my friends yeah. my friends is above my family but also make sure that they are able to stand somewhere and say that this my friend is above my friends and it's about my family and this my family is above my friends okay so to you we can we can we can just equally say both ways comes true for each other. It, it, it does. So yeah, it does. we shouldn't just emphasize yeah. on it's only family that is yeah. coming true for me. Yeah. Charlie, there you have it, okay? It has been a wonderful convo with Jacqueline here, okay? Yeah. And you know what? I, I feel like we'll do this again. <laughs> We will do this please, again. Please, please, no. We are going to do we this are, again. We are going to do this again. We are going to do this We have an issue. So I'm going to do this again. We are going to do this again. Let's see. I'm going to do this again. It was so much fun. I love to have you. Oh, yeah. We would love to have you again. We would love to have So there you have it. Okay, so... <laughs> We'll be having Jacqueline here again, and then Yay. this time around, we are, we'll be talking about something different, okay? But I do hope you guys love her. Yeah. She has educated me a lot. I have learned something. I've taken a lot from her today. So I hope you also took something from her. Mm-hmm. So let's 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 just rush the comment section. Let's get interacted. Tell us who has come through for you. Tell us your experience and everything. And we hope to catch you next time on our screens. This has been the Culture Vault, uh, Podcast. Sorry, the Culture Podcast. And I'm Frederick. And this is Jacqueline. Jacqueline, So we'll see you again. See you. Bye. Bye.